Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to prepare the journal entries to record the issue of shares and debentures by limited liability companies. Okay, so let's start off by first understanding what is meant by a limited liability company, or as we say for short, an LLC. Most of us will be familiar with two types of companies so far, sole traders and partnerships. And in both types of companies, the owners have unlimited liability. Now what that means is that in the event the company goes bankrupt, the owners may have to sell their personal assets in order to pay off the liabilities of the company. I mean, could you imagine that? Your business doesn't go well and you have to sell your family's home, you have to sell your car, you have to rent your dog out for work, or Spartan, <laughs> right? So that's not a risk that a lot of people are willing to take. So that's where the limited liability status of an LLC seems a bit advantageous. And what we mean by limited liability is literally that. The liability of the owners in the event the company goes bankrupt is limited to the amount which they have invested in the company. Something I think the dog might be grateful for. Okay, so the question you may be asking is, how therefore does a company obtain limited liability status? Quick and simple answer, when you are registering the company or setting it up, you simply have to tick off limited liability in the paperwork. So now you might want to know, well, why doesn't everybody register a company with limited liability status? That way, their personal assets are not a risk. Well, companies can be a bit complicated in terms of their ownership structure and the decision-making process. It can be. They don't have to be, but they can be. And because of that, you see, some people, they, they don't like all that structure. The, the owners of an LLC, you now you can have a lot of owners. When I say a lot, I mean you can have dozens, hundreds, even thousands. And these owners will elect um, a group of people called the board of directors to run the company on their behalf. Now, it's not to say that every decision will take a very long time to make, but some people prefer to not have as much structure as a limited liability company requires. And hence, that's why some people will still prefer to be a sole trader or a partnership. Now, another advantage an LLC has over sole traders and partnerships is that it has the potential to raise a lot more capital. With sole traders and partnerships, the capital raising ability is kind of limited to the number of owners and that those owners' personal resources. As I mentioned a, a little while ago, companies can potentially have dozens, hundreds, or thousands of owners. So each owner's personal assets will not necessarily be a limiting factor in the ability of the LLC to raise capital. Now, to be fair, the adv that advantage of being able to raise a lot more capital than sole traders and partnerships depends on the type of LLC you register as. If you register as a private LLC, you have to specify who can be an owner. And that's an attempt usually to keep the control of the company within the hands of a few people. But the downside is you therefore do not have the potential to raise as much capital as if you register as the second type of company, which is a public LLC or a public company. And with a public company, you can sell shares or pieces of your company to the public at large, which means your potential capital base is very big. But the downside is it also opens up the possibility that people can buy up your company or pieces of your company and take control from you. So it's a trade-off, but there are usually ways around those issues. Now the question is, how does an LLC raise capital? Simple answer, it does so by issuing shares. So the question now becomes, well, what is a share? A share is literally what it sounds like. It's a piece of the company. Think of a pizza. Now, let's say you and some friends put up some money to buy a pizza. When the pizza comes, if each person contributed equally, everyone gets the same number of slices. If you put up more money, you may be able to get more slices. So a share in a company is literally a piece of the company. And if you buy a share, you are known as a shareholder. With an LLC, the owners decide how much capital they want to raise, and then they do so by deciding on the number of shares and the price for, that, for those shares. For example, if they wanted to raise $10 million, they might sell 10 million shares at $1 each, or they may sell 1 million shares at $10 each. Now the legal maximum number of shares that a company is permitted to issue is known as its authorized share capital. And each share has what is known as a par value or a basic value. All right, so what par value is like, okay, let's say you had your wallet in your pocket and you took out your wallet and you took out a currency note, whatever country you find yourself in, Trinidad, Barbados, Guyana, wherever you guys are. And on that currency note, it had a one right up in the corners. So it means the value of that note is $1. If the, if the number was five, then it's $5. If it was 10, it's $10, etc. 
So the par value is basically the understood value or the value assigned to a share. Right. Most shares have a par value, but there are some instances where there are no par shares. For the, the duration of this video, I will not be dealing with any no par shares, so all of the shares will have a par value. The most basic type of share that a company can issue is called an ordinary share or sometimes referred to as common stock. Now I know we usually use the word stock in the context of inventory, goods, merchandise, and it's really a North American custom to use stock when referring to shares uh, or, or part of the ownership of the company. And since my video is directed mainly towards Caribbean students, I will be using the word shares to refer to the part ownership of a company instead of the word stock. As I mentioned before, when someone buys shares in a company, they are then referred to as a shareholder. If you buy an ordinary share, you are known as an ordinary shareholder. And ordinary shareholders have rights. They, one, have a right to vote at what is called an annual general meeting. So remember a little while ago I mentioned that the owners of the company, the shareholders, hire this group of people called the board of directors to run the company for them. So the, the directors, they, don't, they may own shares, fine, but they answer to the shareholders. So they don't just get to do whatever they want. They kind of need to ask the shareholders, well, would you like us to do this or that? Now, it's a little more complicated than that, but what, what happens is every year, they have something called an AGM, an annual general meeting, and they have the shareholders vote on certain decisions. Now, something else to which you are entitled as an ordinary shareholder is dividends. What are dividends? Now, why do people get into business in the first place? To make a profit. Now, when you are a shareholder, you are not probably working for the company. You could be, right? But you still want piece of the profits. That's why you invested in the company in the first place. So the profits that are paid to you are called, or the pieces of profit that are paid to you are called dividends. Now, the thing is, you need to be aware of this. Ordinary shareholders, while they have a right to dividends, they are never bound to be paid dividends. Because if the company doesn't do well, guess what happens? You might make any profit. And if you don't make any profit, guess what? There's no money to pay dividends, <laughs> all right? And also, ordinary shareholders bear the most risk out of all of the investors in a company. Why? Because in the event that the company goes bankrupt, they are the last to be repaid their investment. So any loans the company has that's secured against assets or collateral, those things are paid first. And then maybe any unsecured loans. And I'm gonna mention um, the other type of shares called preference shares or preferred shares they are paid off and then ordinary shareholders. So by the time you get to the ordinary shareholders, you may not have any money left. So ordinary shareholders, though they own the company and they can vote on decisions, they bear the most risk out of all of the investors in the company. All right, so what we're gonna take a look at now are the journal entries to record the issue of ordinary shares at par value. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do now is take a look at an example. So the first thing we have to do is to take a read. So example one, a company issues a million one dollar ordinary shares at par value. The issue is fully subscribed and all monies are paid into the business's bank account. Okay, so let's reread that and unpack what's there so we can understand what we've read. So the company issues a million one dollar ordinary shares. So the million is how many shares it issued. The one dollar is the par value. So remember the par value is the basic value of the share. And they issue those shares at par value, which means that they have sold them for the same one dollar, which is their par value. The issue is fully subscribed, which means all of the shares were bought and all monies are paid into the business's bank account. Okay, so how much money are we getting? Well, how many, how many shares have we issued? A million shares, at what value? A dollar each. So a million dollars is flowing into bank. Bank is an asset. So to record an increase in bank, because money is coming into it, you have to debit bank. Now, once again, we're dealing with the general journal and with the general journal, you enter all your debit entries first then you enter your credit entries, and the credit entries must be indent well, yeah, indented relative to the debit entries. Okay, so let's go. So the first thing we enter is bank. Bank is the asset that's increasing, so we debit bank for a million dollars. Where did the money come from? It came from ordinary share capital. That's what we issued. Share capital is increasing, or capital is increasing, and to record an increase in capital, you have to credit the capital account. So you're going to credit ordinary share capital at a million dollars. You can also have ordinary share capital at par values, ordinary shares at par value. It, they, they are different things you can put. I usually put whatever the, the question has given me. Although I didn't do that here, I have ordinary share capital and it says ordinary shares at par value. So it's not fixed. Narratives. A narrative is a brief description of the transaction, what happened, to record the issue of a million, one dollar ordinary shares at par. 
simple and straightforward. Now, I also want to take a look at how the balance sheet will look. So, I didn't put a name for the company, so we're just gonna put balance sheet as at nor a date. Just wanted to show the most important information. So, assets, bank, one million. Total assets, a million. Where the money came from? Came from capital and reserves. I'll talk about what reserves are a little later. We'll come back to that. So, what share capital do we have? Ordinary share capital at par. How much? One million. And there you go. So your balance sheet balances. Now I know some of you guys balance sheets look a little different. That's fine. There's no one right way to do a balance sheet. So let me just scroll down a little. So, so this, this transaction, this entry here is reflected in the balance sheet as, as shown there. And assets equal to capital. Alright. So second example. Let's take a read. So here we have a company issues a million one dollar ordinary shares at par value and three hundred thousand five dollar ten percent preferences at par. So all of a sudden we have a different type of share. So I did mention preference shares a bit earlier. So let me talk about them very quickly now. So preference shares, also called preferred shares, they're a type of share that has some slightly different features to ordinary shares. Now, the features of ordinary shares, ordinary shares confer, confer voting rights to the shareholder, as well as the right to receive dividends if declared by the board of directors. The preference shareholder said, hey what? We could keep your voting rights. I don't really want to make decisions. I just want money. And also, I don't want to not know how much money I'm getting. I want a fixed rate of money every year. So you can take your voting rights and give me fixed dividends every year. So that being said, the 10% in front of pref with preference shares, the 10% is the dividend rate, the preference dividend rate. So preference dividend, preference shareholders, sorry, have no voting rights like ordinary shareholders, but they receive a fixed rate of dividend every year once dividends are declared and they are paid before the ordinary shareholders. So we are issuing $300,000, $5, 10 preference shares. The $300,000 is the number of preference shares. The $5 is clearly what? The par value. And the issue is fully subscribed, which means all the shares were bought and all monies are paid into the business's bank account. Okay? So I'm going to record both of them, well, the ordinary shares separate from the preference shares. And then I'm going to show you uh, what we call a compound entry, putting both entries together to save on some time and space. So once again, let's do for ordinary shares. So a million shares at a dollar each. So into bank, we have a million dollars coming. So bank is an asset. We debit it when it increases. The money came from ordinary share capital at par, a million dollars. All right, narration to record the issue of a million, one dollar ordinary shares at par. The preference shares. So the preference shares to so 300,000 by five dollars gives us 1.5 million into bank. So bank is debited and preference share capital is increasing. And to record an increase in capital, you have to credit the share capital account. 10% preference shares, 1.5 million. And to record the issue of $300,000, $5, 10 preference shares at par. So once again, you can just pull exactly what happened in transaction as the narrative. So what I want to show you now, is it says you see alternative there. So what I want to do is kind of consolidate these entries into one journal entry. So we had a total of 2.5 million coming into bank. So you can debit bank for 2.5 million and you can show two credits, one to ordinary share capital for a million and one to preference share capital for 1.5 million. And the sum of the credit entries will be equal to the debit entry or in this case, the sum of the debits. And your narration, right? So it's a, a little longer than the previous ones because you're kind of combining both of them together. So let's take a look and see how the balance sheet will look here now. So we have a second type of share <clears throat> sorry, being issued. So we're going to include that as well in our capital section. So assets, bank, 2.5 million, uh, totaling 2.5, share capital and reserve. So we have ordinary shares, 1 million, preference share capital, 1.5. You could also put the 10% preference shares here as well. That's fine. And our total, what's the total? 2.5 million. Right. So we see once again, assets, equal to capital in this case. No liabilities, so assets equal to capital. Okay, let's take a look at example three. So example 3A, a company issues a million one dollar ordinary shares at a premium of 50 cents. What's a premium? And 300,000 five dollar 10 percent preference shares at a premium of two dollars. Hmm, what is this premium thing? So if you think back to a bit earlier in the video, I mentioned that the par value is the basic value per share. And I also mentioned that the authorized capital is the legal maximum number of shares a company is permitted to issue. But there's a way they can get around that limit legally. So sometimes people might want to pay more for a company's shares than the par value. 
right? If you think of companies, for example, like Apple or Microsoft, or if you guys are being curious, Google a company called Berkshire Hathaway and take a look at their share price. Quite interesting. Okay, so sometimes companies have very good um, products, very good go um, goods and services. They may take an interest in a lot of um, current issues. They may support um, research on cancer. They may support environmental cleanups, that kind of stuff. So people might say, okay, look, you know what? I want to pay more than this company's par value for their share. And that drives the price. So a company can issue their shares at a price above the par value. And the excess above the par value is known as the premium. So here, the premium has been explicitly identified in each case. So how do we account for this? Well, it's still money coming in. It's just that we can't put it in the share capital account because the share capital account must always show the par value of the share capital. Because remember, you have an, a, a legal limit. So if you had, have a value in your share capital account above the legal limit, something is wrong. So you always show and, and only show the par value of the capital in the capital account. If you issue at a premium, then that extra money will go into a reserve called share premium account. So let's take a look. So let's get some figures going. So a million one dollar ordinary shares. A million by one is a million dollars at a premium of 50 cents. So they're also paying an additional 50 cents. So 50 cents of 0.5 by a million is a half a million. So from the issue of the ordinary shares, we have 1.5 million dollars coming into bank. And where did it come from? It came from ordinary share capital at par, which is a million, and share premium or premium on ordinary shares, and that's half a million. Narration, basically what happened to record the issue of a million one dollar ordinary shares at a premium of 50 cents per share. Okay, the next thing is the preference shares. So we have $300,000, $5, 10 preference shares at a premium of $2. So $5 is the par, and they issued it at a premium of two, which means you get in not just $5 per share, but seven. Seven by 300,000 is 2.1 million. So bank is getting 2.1 million, and it came from preference share capital at par, which is 150,000, 1.5 million, sorry. And the extra $2, and that's 600,000, right? And of course, 1.5 plus the six will give us 2.1 million. All right, so we have the narration there saying what happened. And I would like to show you guys the alternative, the compound entry, which is where you put the total into bank. Sorry, I pressed the wrong thing. So bank, so 3.6. So let's just double check that, right? So we have 1.5 coming in from the ordinary share capital issue and 2.1. And 1.5 and 2.1 would give us back 3.6. Where did it come from? Right, ordinary share capital par, 1 million. Premium on ordinary shares, that's the half a million, right? 10% preference shares as the 1.5 million, and then we have the premium on preference shares is 600,000. Okay, and if you add up everything here, you're gonna get back the 3.6 million. Narration, a little longer than usual because it's a compound entry. So I'm gonna use this information now to fill in the balance sheet. So bank has 3.6 million, so let's put that there. So bank, so balance sheet, uh, assets, bank, 3.6 million, total assets, right, okay. So share capital and reserves, so we have ordinary shares, Sorry, share capital, right? Um, the ordinary shares, that was 1 million. And we have preference shares, or 10% preference shares, that's the 1.5, which gives us 2.5 million for the par value of the, of the share capital. And we have our reserves. So a reserve is an amount of money set aside for a specific purpose, or in this case, coming from a specific source. And in this case, the source is the premium paid on the shares. Now, we have premium on ordinary shares, that was the half a million, and then we have the 600,000 for the preference shares, giving us a total of 1.1 million. And 2.5 plus 1.1 will give us 3.6. And of course, assets equal to capital, your balance sheet balances. Right, now what we're gonna do is take a look at an alternative wording for the, the premium, how, they, how else they could tell you about this premium. And you need to know about it because it can come and you have to be able to distinguish or to, to extract the information effectively. Okay, so example 3B, let's take a read. A company issues a million $1 ordinary shares at an issue price of $1.50. Now the issue price is the price at which the shares were issued or for how much they were sold. And the $1 in front of the word or the phrase ordinary shares, that's the par value. So if you're selling 
a one dollar share for a dollar and fifty cents, it means you are selling that share or those shares above their par value. And by how much? Well, the par value is a dollar, and you are selling it for a dollar and fifty cents. So the premium is fifty cents. Let's continue. And three hundred thousand five dollar ten percent preference shares at a price of seven dollars. So the five dollar preference shares are being sold for seven. Seven dollars is higher than their par value, so it means we are issuing those shares at a premium. And in this case, the premium is the difference between the seven dollars, the issue price, and the par value, five dollars. So seven minus five will give us two dollars. So this is the exact same question from just now. So I'm just going to kind of speed through the solution. But what I wanted to show you is an alternative way that they could have worded the question. So you need to be aware of the wording and par value and premium and these things and to look out for it. So bank, um, bank went up by 1.5 million. Oh, right, for the ordinary shares, came right. So 1 million, half a million, and then that's ordinary shares. Cool. And then bank went up by how much for the preference? 2.1 million. The par value was... 1.5, the premium was 0.6, and that's the thing there. And the alternative, right, so the alternative is the compound entry, so one entry for everything, right? Also, ordinary share capital. No, you, it does, the order in which you list these things does not matter terribly in terms of the, the credits. You can put the, the ordinary share capital and the preference shares first, and then follow by the premiums second. Or you can put everything pertaining to ordinary shares first and then preference shares second. But once you have the correct items in the credit column and the correct values, you should be fine. Okay, so slightly longer narration, of course. And let's go. Now, if at any point in time you find I'm zooming through a little too much, you guys can adjust the speed in the settings or you can pause, right? So I'm just kind of speeding through this one because I, this is the exact same question from just now. So I don't want to spend too long doing the same exact thing again, All right? Um, okay, so share capital reserve. So share capital, we have ordinary shares at par, 1 million, preference shares at par, 1.5 million, total share capital, par value of share capital, 2.5 million. Let's scroll down a little bit. The reserves now, right? So share premium on ordinary shares, and then share premium on preference shares, total into 1.1, 1.1 plus 2.5 is 3.6, which balances again. Okay, so now let's take a look at debentures. All right, so let's take a read. So example 4A reads, a company issues $250,004.10% debentures 2020-2025. So what's a debenture? So first of all, a debenture is a type of loan that a company takes. Now, the 250000 is the number of debentures they issue, the $4, so it's not the par value, that's the price of the debenture. If you go on to do accounting past CSEC, you will encounter premiums and discounts on debentures and discounts on shares as well. But for now, we don't have to worry about those things. So it's also not called a par value, so it's not a par value for debentures that I know of. Could be wrong, check it out. 10% is the interest rate. All loans attract interest, the 10% is the interest rate. 2020 to 2025, the 2020, that's called the tenor of the loan, the length of time for which the money is, is borrowed and when it's expected to be repaid. 2020 is when the money was first borrowed, 2025 is when the principal amount is expected to be repaid in full. You may repay pieces as you go along, or you may repay all at the end with a bullet payment, really up to the, the details in the loan agreement. So just know that a debenture is a type of loan, hence it's a liability, all right? So, how do we record this? Well, money is coming into the bank. So it says the issue is fully subscribed and all monies are paid into the business's bank account. So bank is going up. So we have the debit bank. So debit bank, a million. So because 250 by four will give us a thousand. A thousand, thousand is a million. The 10% plays no part in it. 10% is the interest rate. That only comes into play in the income statement. And that's not what we're doing now, right? Uh, where did money come from? Came from the issue of 10% debentures which gave us a million dollars. And to recall the issue of, right, okay, now, balance sheet, right? So I know some of you guys do your balance sheets different ways, so just follow me for a second. So assets, assets, sorry. Bank, a million, right. Liabilities, 10% debentures, a million, a million, okay. And in this case, we're just assuming that there no, there's no capital, no shares. So assets equal to liabilities, all right? 
Now let's do the, the next part one time. Um, so this here is an alternative wording to the same example from just now. So before, you can see they said $250,000 for $10% debentures. So you have quite a number of debentures to sell, so you can sell to different people. Alternatively, you may just sell a million worth to one party or to various parties. So a company issues a million, so it should have said a million dollars worth of 10% debentures. All right. 20, 20 to 2025. So once again, a million dollars is how much the value of the debentures issued. 10% is the interest rate, which plays no part in the issue, no, no part in the recording of the issue. And 20, 20 to 2025 is the tenor. All right. When we borrowed it, we we'll have to pay back. So bank is getting a million dollars. It's come from 10% debentures and narration. Balance sheet, assets, bank, million, million total assets, liabilities, 10% debentures, a million, a million. And once again, assets equal to liabilities. Now, what we're going to take a look at is when we issue shares and debentures together. So get ready for that. Yeah, guys. So example 5A, a company issues the following, 5 million $1 ordinary shares at an issue price of $10 per share. So right away, the par value of those ordinary shares is a dollar and we're issuing it at $10 per share, which means there's a premium involved, $9, the difference between the issue price and the par value. Then we have a million $2, 7% preference shares at a premium of $3 per share. So here, they separated the premium for us. How nice of them. And four hundred thousand twenty-five dollar ten percent debentures twenty twenty to twenty thirty. Okay, these issues are fully subscribed. Everything was bought, and all monies are paid into the business's bank account. Okay, so we're gonna first thing I'm gonna do entry wise is separate them. So I'm gonna do each one separately, then combine them all into a compound entry. Now you don't have to do both. I want to make that clear. You can do either record them separately or do one journal entry for everything. It depends on the instruction in a question and of course the space afforded to you in the question paper. All right, so for the ordinary shares, five million by $10. Now the par value is a dollar, yes, but we're issuing the shares for $10 each. Five by 10 is 50, so we're getting 50 million in the bank. Where did they come from? Well, ordinary share capital, which in this case, the par value is five million, which means that the premium is the remainder 45 million, which as we, we could calculate by multiplying nine by 5 million. And that's to record the issue of $5 million $1 ordinary shares at a premium of $9 a share. Or you could say at an issue price of $10 per share. Same information is communicated. Now let's deal with the preference shares. So a million $2, 7% preference shares at a premium of $3 per share. So a million, shares now two dollars is the par value three is the premium so two plus three will give us five so five million is going into bank where did it come from the preference share capital at par which is two dollars by a million that's two million and the premium on preference share which is three by a million which is three million all right narration and the benches let's scroll down a little bit so how much money four hundred thousand twenty five by twenty five that's a million ten million my bad oops <laughs> Who designed this question, boy? Thought it was me. Okay, where did it come from? Debentures. So debentures in your case have no, no premium or part, it's just the value. To record that. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to show you guys how this can look in a single compound journal entry. So let's see how much money would be flowing into bank in total. 10 million, 5 million, that's 6, 15, sorry. 15 plus 50 is 65. <coughs> sorry. Okay, bank, 65. So where did the money come from? Ordinary share capital was 5 million. The premium on ordinary shares was 45, right? Yeah, it was $9 per share as the premium. Preference shares was 2 million, and the premium was 3 million, right? That's five. And the benches was the next 10 million. So five and 45 is 50. Um, 50 and five is 55, and, two, and 10, sorry, is 65, okay. Oh, right, quite a long narration there. So as you think with compound entries, they usually end up with long narrations. All right, so this is where the balance sheets get a little interesting because like I said, I know some of you guys are taught one way to do a balance sheet and some of you are taught the next way. So I sh I'm showing two different versions of the balance sheet here. So just follow with me, right? 
So balance sheet, as a blah, 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 assets. So we have bank giving us 65 million. Now I like to do liabilities, assets minus liabilities, which in this case we'll have 10 million from the debentures, giving us 55 million. So I know some of you guys do liabilities below. I'm gonna show that after, so don't panic. Don't fling your phone and want to punch me in my face. There are different ways to do a balance sheet. I know some of your teachers don't tell you that. Eh? I know some of them show you one way, and if you do it the next way, you get it wrong. There is no one right way to do a balance sheet. The only thing I will say is if a question gives you an instruction, like in an order of liquidity, or you have to show working capital, and you don't follow the instruction, yes, you will not get all the marks. So please do follow the instructions of the question. Um, hey, capital now. Let's scroll down a little bit. So share capital and resources share capital. So we have ordinary share capital. That was five million. Preference share capital. That was two million, right? Total in seven. And we have the reserves. So we have the share premium and ordinary share. That was forty-five million. And the preference share. That was the three million, giving us forty-eight. And forty-eight and seven will give us back fifty-five. So you can see there. Let me. Okay, I'll zoom out a little bit so everything fits a little better. All right. So fifty-five here for net assets. So assets minus liabilities equal to capital. Right? And yes, I'm going to do the next version now. So hold your horses. Okay. So balance sheet as a blah blah blah. Assets, bank, boom. Right. So now we're doing share capital and liabilities. So liabilities. Now you can put your share capital first, followed by liabilities. It does not matter. At least arithmetic. Alright, 10% debentures, 10 million. Okay. So you have share capital and reserves, so share capital. So we know what's going here, ordinary shares. Preference share power value, total power value of preference of um, share capital, reserve share premium on ordinary shares, premium on preference shares, total inter for right. So if we add up these three things here, I guess what we're gonna get that lovely 65, which balances back to the total asset. So assets, 65 million, zoom out a little bit again. Assets equal to liabilities plus capital. 65 million, 65 million. Nice. All right, one more example, then we call it a day. Okay, guys, example 5B, last one for the day. So a company is the following. A million five dollar ordinary shares at a premium of 250 per share. Okay, so here they separated the premium from the power value, so it's a bit easier to figure out. Then 500,000, $3, 10% preference shares at a price of $5 per share. So here they didn't separate the premium uh, from the power. They can, well, they told you what the power was and they gave you the issue price. So we need to pull out the premium, which would be Two dollars, right? And seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of twelve percent debentures, twenty twenty to twenty twenty. So if we had no calculation for the debenture figure there, they gave it to us. Issues are fully subscribed, and all monies are paid into the business's bank account. Okay. So let's start with the ordinary share. Let's show everything separately first. So ordinary shares, um, a million multiplied by five will give us. So you can do that too. You could you could start with the share capital now. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can put your credit entries first and then follow with a debit. You can write them in, leaving a space for bank. All right? If you're not sure how much going here, that's fine. So you can put your ordinary share capital par value, you can put your premium, and then you can add 5 million plus 2.5 will give us 7.5. Narration, All right? So same now here, you can put the bank, sorry, right? Put the bank wording, you can then put Preference share capital. So 500,000 by 3 is 1.5 million. Multiply by 500 by 2 is 1 million. And 1 1.5 plus 1 will give us 2.5. Narration. Boom. All right. Let's do the debentures. All right. So bank. So that, there's no calculation there. It. it gave us a figure 750,000 from the debentures and the narration. Okay. Now let's take a look at the compound entry. So bank, if you're not sure about the figure, you can leave it for last. Just make sure to put your debits first. Don't put your credits first, as in in order of appearance. You can write stuff in and leave space for the debits. I'm talking too much. Okay, ordinary share capital pop, that was 5 million. Premium, that's 2.5. Preference share capital, 1.5 million. The premium is $2, that's 10, no, 1. <laughs> And the debentures is 7.75 million, right? So you add all of that up, guess what you're gonna get? That figure. A nice long narration, blah, 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 blah. Okay, balance sheet time. So I'm gonna, do, once again, I'm gonna do it both ways. So keep your pants on, unless you don't have one pants, in which case, yeah. 
All right. All right. So assets, bank. How much was it in total? Ten point seven five million. Ten point seven five million liabilities, debentures, seven fifty. Give me ten million in net assets. All right. Share capital and reserves now. Share capital, ordinary shares, five million. Preference shares, one point five. Total par value is six point five million. Sorry, yeah, reserves. Ordinary share premium, that was how much? 2.5, preference share premium, 1 million, which means 3.5 in total, and 6.5 and 3.5 is 10 million, which matches back to the 10 million top here. So assets, sorry, assets minus liabilities equal to capital. Now let's do it the other way, where you have assets equal to capital plus liabilities, just because I know some of you guys flipping, flipping crazy. All right. Okay, assets, bank, that figure, net assets, sorry, total assets, share capital and liabilities. So share capital, so liabilities first, debentures, that's the figure. Share capital and reserve, share capital, ordinary shares at premium, at par, sorry, preference shares at par, total par value, reserves, ordinary shares, 2.5, Preference share premium, 1 million, total 3.5. So when you add 3.5 and 6.5, you get 10. 10 million and 750 will give us 10, 750. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see everything there. Right, so total assets, assets equal to liabilities plus capital. Okay, that's quite a bit. Good job on, good job on following along so far. I hope you took some notes. Let's, let's hit that outro and call it a day. All right, guys, so there you have it. Those are how to do the journal entries for the issue of shares and debentures for limited liability companies. I will be doing a couple of follow-up videos, one to show the appropriation account for LLCs. If you want to check out how to do an appropriation account for a partnership, click on that card up there, and I will also put a link in the description below. I'll be adding this video to uh, an LLCs playlist, so most likely I'll link that in the description below as well, so you can check out one place for all the videos on LLCs. So if anybody has any questions on anything in the video, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. Right, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I do enjoy making these videos. Uh, sometimes it's a bit hard, and I, I've been a, a little sick for the past couple of days. So it was a little, a little trying, but I really want to keep these videos coming because I know a lot of you guys, uh, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback from you all, and I, I like that. I like knowing that, that I'm helping you guys, so I'm going to continue to do it. All right, and also always remember you, the first person that has to help you is yourself, right? You have to believe you can do it and you have to put in the work. And I'm very happy to provide videos that help you to know that you're going along the right path. Because if we don't know if what we're doing is right, then you could be practicing, but practicing very wrong. And we don't want to do that, okay? So if what you're doing isn't working, then you're going to have to try a different approach to it. Adapt. Because change is the only constant. Alright guys, so don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.